My perfect sister made false accusations against me because I refused to supply alcohol for her party. My parents decided to take a vacation to ski in Aspen and let my sister watch the house for them. They told her no parties, but that was a rule she straight up ignored. A day after our parents left, my 18-year-old sister started sending out invites to a party. And she was promising free alcohol. I didn't see that post just yet. But my sister called me and asked me to go get alcohol for her party, because I was over 21 and could legally buy it. She also wanted me to pay for it and said she'd invite me to the party and introduce me to an easy girl in order to pay me back. I told her that I wasn't going to break the law to make her happy. She should never have told people her party would have alcohol. She screamed at me over the phone that I was ruining her life, and that she couldn't take back the invites now that they were all over her Facebook. I looked at her post and face palmed. I told her that what she did was really stupid, and she and her friends were all underage. So it's illegal. She tried to say it'd only be illegal if I narked on them. I said I wouldn't narc, but I wasn't going to buy her booze either. She screamed at me some more, so I hung up the phone. Well that night my sister had the party. And someone called the police for underage drinking. After being arrested and confronted by police later on, my sister threw me under the bus and said that I'd supplied the alcohol she was using. Turns out she actually broke into dad's liquor cabinet, and thought it'd be better to frame me for her crime. Police came and arrested me at my apartment the day after the party. They seemed already convinced I was guilty, and didn't really listen to me when I said I was never there. But I willingly cooperated with them. At the station I told them the whole story, and got them to look at my sister's Facebook post. Thankfully there were a few people there who listened to me. But I still had to sit the night out in a cell while my parents were called. My mom and dad flew back home overnight, and bailed out both my sister and I. At first, my mom tried to make my dad leave me in jail, because my sister had told them her lies as well. But my dad took the time to talk to me, and look at my sister's Facebook. He believed me. This caused a fight between him and my mom. When they got home my dad discovered my sister had broken into his liquor cabinet, and spoke to police on my behalf. My mom however still wanted the blame to fall on me because as she put it the charges were ruining her baby's future. But my innocence was further proven by the fact that I and my car were seen on CCTV when I left work. On top of that, the apartment I was living in had CCTV cameras which watched the parking lot and showed me arriving home soon after. My car did not move from there for the rest of the day and night. In my sister's story to the police I had driven out and gotten the alcohol for her. But I wasn't seen on CCTV in any liquor store in the county, and my bank account showed no transactions buying alcohol. My parents' house also had a camera at the front door, and my car was never seen in the driveway that day. After being confronted with those facts, my sister's story changed to saying I already had the alcohol and gave it to her at my apartment. But my sister's car had never showed up at my apartment either. And there were like three cheap beers in my apartment fridge and no hard alcohol. My sister finally had to give up on her lies, and my parents were severely disappointed in her. However, my mom still tried to convince me to take the fall for my sister. She came to my apartment and actually demanded that I tell the police that it was all my fault. I said I wasn't going to ruin my future for my sister. She refused to leave and went from demanding to begging. She even got on her knees and tried to convince me that she and my dad would make everything okay in the long run if I just took the blame now. I said I'd rather live my life poor than have that felony on my record. She threw a huge fit and started throwing things because I refused to do as she wanted. I threatened to call the police and she left my apartment cussing me out like a mad woman. I've never heard so many f-bombs out of her before or since. But she kept them up all the way to her car, and followed it up with saying she should have aborted me before driving off. I called my dad right away and told him everything that happened. He was insanely pissed and got in a huge fight with my mom as soon as she got home. She didn't even deny anything she said or did, because she deemed it would have been for the greater good of their daughter. My dad told her that she couldn't destroy me to save my sister. Then he threatened to divorce her if she didn't try to make things right. She ended up sobbing and then saying she'd do whatever he wanted. My dad said that it was couples and family counseling, or it was divorce. My mom signed a prenup before she married him, and really had no choice. In the family counseling I called her out on how she always believed my sister's lies. My sister tried to say they were not lies. But each one I pointed out from over the years said otherwise. I'd taken the time to write a list of all the ones I could remember from the past decade that had all been proven she lied. My mom and sister were forced to stay silent as I read them all. They tried to interject repeatedly, but my dad and the counselor silenced them. My sister now proven beyond a doubt to be a liar and a manipulator, just shut down and refused to say anything more to the counselor. My mom finally apologized to me but it was obviously a forced apology because she looked so uncomfortable doing it. I told her that her apology was very fake, and after so many years of favoritism the damage was already done. My relationship with her never really recovered, because she was convinced I was guilty no matter what was said until my sister admitted the truth. Then she wanted me to pretend to be the guilty one anyway to protect her favorite child. But nothing went her way. So she just went back to crying about it. When my sister went to court, my mom pleaded with the judge to go easy on my sister. She had charges of underage drinking and giving other underage people alcohol, as well as attempting to frame me for her crime. She also resisted arrest when the police came and shut down the party. She was very drunk when it happened. They kept her in a cell overnight to sober up, and then she told police I'd been the one to provide the alcohol. My mom's begging, along with a relentless lawyer my parents hired, got the judge to cut a deal. This was provided my sister pleaded guilty, which she did not want to do. But her lawyer highly recommended she take said deal to avoid jail time, because there was no other way of keeping her from getting a felony on her record. 
My sister's lawyer used the fact that the alcohol had not been bought that day, but rather had already been in the house long before the party happened to help lessen the charges. My sister's Facebook had also been completely deleted by her as soon as she was able to in order to hide the post. The judge just wanted the case over with, so my sister got off with a huge fine that our mom paid most of out of her own pocket, and a couple years probation. She was also made to get therapy too by her dad. She's never really shown actual remorse for what she did though and only had animosity for me, no matter how in the wrong she was. She was eventually diagnosed as a narcissist after dad made her go see a doctor. After her probation and four years of college were over, she decided she was going to leave home for California and never come back once she landed a good job. She currently works in an office in LA, and we've not spoken in years. Dad got her that job, and she's not shown any real appreciation for it. Even my mom has given up on her ever coming home for the holidays and us being a family again. It tore her up inside for a few years. Now she's just bitter. She doesn't really blame me anymore but we only seem to show indifference to each other. Just because my sister cut her off wouldn't make me the new de facto favorite. It just means my mom lost her baby, and isn't getting her back. She can't leave my dad because she's too reliant on him, despite having her own career. She'd never want to be on her own again, so she's just become a shell of her former self. Things between me and my dad are still great. He's pretty much disowned my sister for what she's done, and has stopped caring if she'll ever talk to him again. He and my mom don't even sleep in the same bedroom anymore. She moved into the guest room some 5 years ago and has stayed there. Their marriage is really only one on paper these days.